What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If you're coming across this channel for the first time, you're welcome. I'm Esther, and you're welcome back to another reaction video. If you're just coming across this channel for the first time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you get notified whenever I drop any beautiful video on this channel. And to all of my amazing subscribers, you guys are so amazing. So now, guys, I'll be reacting to the difference between Islam and Christianity. This was requested also. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. Islam and Christianity are two of the world's biggest religions. Mm. Their histories begin in exactly the same place, starting in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Also, Islam and Christianity, along with Judaism, are known as Abrahamic faiths, mm. meaning that they all believe that the biblical prophet Abraham was one of the original fathers of having these faiths delivered to humanity. Mm. However, there are several key differences between these two religions mm. that I'll be exploring in this episode. Episode. Oh, Welcome to that. another episode of wow. FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and yeah, we're exploring the world of religion again. And this time, we're looking at the differences between Islam and Christianity. So if you are either Christian or Muslim, give this video a big thumbs up. Or if you just love learning in general, also hit that like button on this video. And if this is your first time here at FTD Facts, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to be notified of future videos like this. Okay, so let's begin. We got a lot to talk about in this episode. When we first look at Christianity, Christianity consists of people who believe in the deity Jesus Christ. Yeah. Christians, generally speaking, believe Christ is the Son of God and walked on earth as the incarnate form of God, the Father. So in other words, they believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. Islam is made up of individuals who believe in the deity Allah, which is just the Arabic word for God. They believe that Allah's teachings were recorded word for word by God's last prophet named Muhammad. Currently, Islam is the second largest religion in the entire world after Christianity. And based on the latest estimates, the current global population of Christianity sits at 2.3 billion followers, which is 31% of the total population population of the world. Wow. Islam follows behind at 1.8 billion followers, mm -hmm. which works out to be approximately 24% of the entire global population. So as you can see, these two religions, of course, have played a huge role in shaping what we know to be human history. Mm -hmm. Because look, look at this, this is half of the population here fall in between these two religions. Now, when we look at when these two religions were formed as organized religions, Islam takes us back to 610 to 622 CE. Christianity, on the other hand, was established as an organized religion in 28 to 33 CE, which was centuries before Islam. So we hear the terms Christian, Christianity, and all of that. So what does Christian actually mean? If someone calls himself a Christian, what are they saying? Well, Christian simply means a believer in Christianity, which is someone that follows the teachings of Christ. Very simple. Now, Islam means submission to the will of God. And those who submit to the will of God are called Muslims. When it comes to the place of worship, where do Christians go to worship? Well, of course, we know of churches. There's also chapels, cathedrals, basilicas, as well as Christians are allowed to worship in homes and any other living spaces. Muslims worship at mosques, aka masjids, and any other place considered clean by Islamic standards. So it's pretty open. There's not necessarily a specific place that you have to go to worship. Both of these religions are pretty open. One of the main differences between these religions is the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinity or the Godhead is one of the core beliefs of Christianity and it states that there is one God who has three manifestations, the Father, the Son, as well as the Holy Spirit. And I kind of like to use this example, it's not really the best, but you got to think of it like a, a corporation who has three founders. and. All of the three founders have different roles, but under the same umbrella corporation. So in this case, it would be like God, corporation, and then we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which is kind of equally all God. That's kind of how I try to wrap my brain around it, and hopefully that made sense for you. But Muslims, however, believe that they are the ones that practice true monotheism, which means that they do not accept the doctrine of the Trinity because how can three be one? And the core belief of Islam is that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And it's a simple concept, there's just Allah, that's it. 
When it comes to the differences between the scriptures in Christianity and Islam, the holy book in Christianity, of course, is the Bible, and it's said to be the inspired word of God. Yeah. This means different things to different people, but pretty much it means that Christians believe that the books of the Bible are written by many people over a span of 1500 years, and those people were guided by the Spirit of God through divine inspiration. And these writings came through various different forms. You know, in the Bible, there's songs, there's poetry, there's stories, there's genealogies. And in these writings, we see personal expressions yeah. of human beings working side by side with God. Now, when we look at the holy book of Islam, the Quran, it is said to be the word of God. And it was dictated to Muhammad, and it was written down word for word without any sort of personal expression or any other humanness, if you will, added to the writings. The most true reading of the Quran has to be in its original Arabic language because translating it into other languages can also take away from the interpretation of the Quran. Mm. So that's where a lot of times we get a little bit of confusion when it comes to the scriptures of the Quran. People are like, no, but in the original Arabic, it means this. But if you translate it in English or another language, there's not necessarily a direct translation, so some of the context may be lost. So that's what they say, if you want to get the most out of reading the Quran, learn some Arabic, or at least find somebody that knows Arabic and is very versed in the Quran to help you out. So yeah, we discussed quite a bit so far, but before I continue in this episode, you definitely have to check out our playlist about Islam. And I have links to that in the card section of this episode, as well as below in the video description, and I'll also have it at the end of this episode. But in it, we have videos just dedicated to the religion of Islam, where we go into more of the history, as well as the impact that Islam has on the world. Because obviously I can't cover everything in this this episode, but you definitely want to check those ones out. And as a bonus, we do have a playlist on religions in general, so I'll link to that one as well. There's a lot of learning that you can do here on FTD Facts. We've done a lot of videos about religion and culture here on FTD Facts, mm. so feel free to check those out after this episode. Okay, so the next difference I'm looking at is the difference in the prophets. So in the Quran, the prophet Abraham was known as the beloved servant of God, and because of Abraham's devotion to God, God made many of Abraham's descendants prophets. Now the story of the prophet Abraham being commanded to sacrifice his own son Isaac is known in both Christianity and Islam. In Islam that son however who God told Abraham to sacrifice is Ishmael and it was through his lineage that Islam was established through the prophet Muhammad. Yes. In Christianity the son that Abraham was told to sacrifice was his son Isaac. Isaac and through the line of Isaac comes many prophets like Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, King Solomon, and of course, Jesus Christ. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the differences in the beliefs of Jesus Christ in both of their religions. In Islam, Muslims accept that Jesus of Nazareth did in fact exist and that he was born of the Virgin Mary. But Islam also believes that Jesus was simply another prophet equal to other prophets before him. Muslims believe that Muhammad is the final messenger and is superior to all other previous prophets that came before him. In the Christian faith, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, which makes him equal to God. And before he came to earth as a man, he was accepted as the second person of the Trinity. And another title that Jesus is given in Christianity before he came to live on the earth as a man is the Word of God. And then the Word of God so came cool. down to live on earth in human flesh. Islam doesn't believe in the idea that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. They believe that God spared him from that. In the Christian faith, God sacrificing his son Jesus on the cross is actually the focal point of the faith because without that, the world would remain hopeless, just doomed, humanity done. So that leads me to the next difference I want to highlight. What are the differences between the ideas of salvation in both of these religions? Well, Islam teaches that salvation is based on working to achieve it. So how it works is like this. A Muslim must keep the five pillars of Islam. They have to confess the shahada, which is that there is no God but Allah 
as well as Muhammad is his prophet. And generally speaking, when Muslims pray, they are to pray towards Mecca five times a day. They must also fast during the daylight hours of the month of Ramadan. They're also required to give money to the poor, help out people who are in need, and make a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their life. Islam teaches that the Day of Judgment will involve people's good deeds and bad deeds being weighed side by side to see, okay, did the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds. Christianity has a much different concept of salvation and it teaches that a person is saved by the gift of God which is through accepting the death of Jesus Christ through faith in him. So therefore you're no longer required to do a bunch of different good works to be accepted by God and be saved but rather you're just saved through faith in Jesus and because you're saved you just naturally want to now do good works because yeah who doesn't want to help out their fellow man and just be a good person in general. We're coming down to the end of this episode and there's a couple things that I want to take a look at. First of all is the clergy, the different clergy in the two religions. Islam has imams and they are the ones that lead the congregational prayers in the mosques. They also have sheikhs, malana, mullahs and muftis in their religion. In Christianity, there are priests, bishops, the ministers, Christ monks, Reverend. as well as nuns as seen as official clergy. And what are some of the holy days that these religions recognize? Some Christianity days. recognizes probably the biggest celebration in the world, That's Christmas, true. which celebrates the birth of Jesus. There's also Good Friday, which celebrates the death of Jesus. And depending on which denomination of Christianity you fall into, Sunday or Saturday is viewed mm. as the day of rest or the Sabbath. Another holy day for Christians is Easter which celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for Catholic Christians they celebrate Lent which is a season of 40 days but it doesn't count Sundays and this begins on a day called Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday and Catholic Christians also celebrate different saint feast days. Islam of course has their fair share of celebrations but officially not as much as Christianity. There is a the month of Ramadan which is a month of fasting. There's Eid al-Adha, which is the feast of the sacrifice, and Eid al-Fatir, which is a festival at the end of Ramadan. Now I've gotten to the final difference that I want to explore in this episode. So similar to Judaism, Islam tends to have stricter guidelines or rules than Christianity. Now in modern Christianity, most of the hardline rules of the Old Testament are more so related to Judaism now, and many of the rules found in the New Testament are sort of not as harsh as the Old Testament. For example, most Christians freely eat whatever they choose, including pork and foods that are not blessed by religious leaders. But this is something that Muslims and Jews do under the halal and kosher diet rule. So a lot of the ancient traditions related to their dietary laws as well as living laws still remain alive today. So that concludes this episode on the differences between Islam and Christianity. Now this video was presented in the most general sense possible. I know that Christianity and Islam has various different schools of thought and different denominations and all of that, which may have completely different views to anything I just shared in this episode. But for the most part, this is the general views and general differences between Islam and Christianity. So if you have any thoughts or comments about what I shared in this episode, feel free to leave them down below. I love the discussions that we have here on FTD Facts because not only do I get to learn, but we all get to learn together as a community. You can follow me on social media as well. Those links are below in this video description. So shoot me a message and I'll do my best to reply to you as soon as possible. Until the next episode, stay awesome, stay educated, and you know, one love. My name is Leroy Kenton, and I'll see you soon. Okay, now for all you people that made it to this end screen, here's that playlist on Islam as well as that playlist on religion in general that I spoke about. So don't forget to come back here to FTD Facts every single week for more interesting topics about your favorite subjects. Thanks for watching, and look out for another video really soon. Wow, beautiful with FTD facts, facts or truths without borders. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful, and I love the fact that is able to explore and see more of this video. Like I said, it's it's, it's own um, people, individuals might have different perceptions to what he has said, or maybe opposition of what he has said. But there is no hate. 
you can drop that at the comment section. I prefer we discussing rubbing minds together at the comment section. We've learned one or two things from this video. Don't forget to give it massive thumbs up, subscribe if you are yet to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Signing out. Ciao.